This video is brought to you by Shopify. You can set up your online business with Shopify and get a 14 day free trial with the link below. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Volksgeist video. Today we're gonna to be talking about Kid Cudi. Kid Cudi is one of the most beloved rappers alive today, but he's never been the most famous or best selling. In fact, he just earned his first ever number one song a few weeks ago after making music for more than 12 years. However, his reputation is one of the best in hip hop his legacy and genius go unquestioned. In this video, I'm gonna look at how he achieved such an amazing legacy through an authentic persona, iconic signature sound, and deeply personal lyrics. This is Understanding Kid Cudi. Kid Cudi was born Scott Raymond Seguro Muscutty in Cleveland, Ohio. He was raised in Shaker Heights, one of Cleveland's suburbs, by parents who both worked in education. When Scott was only 11 years old, his father died of cancer and that event began his long struggle with depression. Inspired by alternative hip hop groups like A Tribe Called Quest, Scott also started rapping in high school. But after high school, Scott needed a new direction. He couldn't stay in Ohio if he wanted to have a serious shot at making it in music, so his uncle Khalil encouraged him to make a leap and move to New York. In 2004, Scott moved to the South Bronx to live with his uncle with nothing but a demo tape and a dream. In the mid to late 2000s, Kanye West was the king of rap, and he had a huge influence on Kid Cudi. Scott actually ran into Kanye at an electronics store in the mid 2000s and offered him some of his music. Even though Kanye refused it, Cudi wasn't discouraged. He felt confident that he would cross paths with Kanye again. But it was around this time that Cudi and his uncle's relationship started to suffer. Uncle Khalil kicked Cudi out of the house, and in 2006, he passed away before he and Cudi could make amends. Cuddy later talked about feeling a lot of guilt about the way things ended between them, and he wanted to create something to honor his uncle. That creation ended up being his first big hit, Day and Night, which appeared on his debut mixtape, A Kid Named Cuddy. Day and Night gave the world its first glimpse into Kid Cuddy's brooding soul. His dark lyrics were vulnerable and intimate. He told listeners, I feel your pain and you feel mine. The track ended up on Rolling Stone's Best 25 Songs of 2009 and Complex's 100 Best Songs of the Decade. Day and Night ended up catching Kanye West's attention and he quickly signed Kid Cudi to his label, Good Music, asking him to work on his next project, the wildly successful 808s and Heartbreak. Cudi is a credited songwriter and appears on the tracks Heartless, Welcome to Heartbreak, Paranoid, and Robocop. Years later, during the St. Pablo tour, Kanye West called Kid Cudi the most influential artist of the last 10 years. Kid Cudi released his debut album, Man on the Moon, The End of Day in 2009. It featured artists like Ratatat, Kanye West, MGMT, and even narration from Common. The record quickly went platinum and had three hit singles, Make Her Say, Pursuit of Happiness, and of course, Day and Night. Man on the Moon practically invented a new wave of hip hop that combined rock, spaced out pop, electronica, and psychedelic textures. From its melodic, catchy Lady Gaga sample to its indie pop features, the record was a colorful showcase of Kid Cudi's poetic sensibilities and his intense vulnerability. The success of Kid Cudi's first album launched him from struggling artist to superstar. And if we've learned anything from past Volksgeist videos, it's that that transition is never easy. It quickly drove Cudi to a dependency on drugs and alcohol, which only heightened the sense of loneliness and anxiety felt in his second album, Man on the Moon 2, The Legend of Mr. Rager. This record built on the soundscape Cudi explored in his debut with a new focus on trippy and psychedelic styles. He continued exploring themes of depression and drug abuse with increasingly dark and worrisome lyrics. Kid Cudi kept experimenting with rock sounds during the early 2010s, even releasing a self-titled rock album as the band Wizard. The album paid homage to grunge and psychedelic sounds featuring heavy guitars with introspective and experimental atmospheres. They even covered the Nirvana track Where Did You Sleep Last Night. And that comparison between Kid Cudi and Kurt Cobain is somewhat obvious, but it really highlights just how interesting Kid Cudi's presence in the music industry has been. Similarly to Kurt Cobain, Kid Cudi has spent his career being open about his struggle with depression and suicidal thoughts, but at this point in his career around 2012 or 2013, he was sober, out of a desire to better himself and also distance his music from the stoner image he was associated with. But ultimately, the Wizard album received mixed reviews, and looking back, this poorly received record marks the start of a long period of poor reviews from critics and fans alike. 
In 2013, Kid Cudi returned to his hip-hop origins with Indicud, which strived to be more positive and upbeat. Not only did it incorporate new sonic fixtures such as movie samples, it was also a platform for Kid Cudi to focus on his production. He used collaborators such as Kendrick Lamar, RZA, ASAP Rocky, Father John Misty, and Haim to take some of the focus off of his own vocals while crafting unique beats around each artist. Indicud is often considered Cudi's most vibrant and fun album, with lighthearted, catchy tracks and vulnerable lyrics that, for once, felt more inviting than sorrowful. Later that same year, Kid Cudi suffered a severe mental breakdown due to his dependence on antidepressants. Though he was sober, he continued suffering from severe bouts of depression that affected every facet of his life, which he discussed openly and made efforts to treat in and out of the public eye. Kid Cudi's next major release was Speed and Bullet to Heaven, which returned to his love for indie rock. The record contains no electronic sounds whatsoever, instead relying completely on instrumental recordings. It showcased Cudi's acoustic talent, which complemented his dark and gritty lyrics about suicide and depression. The album is generally considered one of his more controversial, with a lot of people not agreeing on whether or not it was any good. In 2016, Kid Cudi continued his alternative rock output with the album Passion, Pain, and Demon Slayin'. In that same year, he announced he had finally checked himself into rehab for suicidal thoughts. He signed off a letter to fans, saying that he knew he deserved to find peace. Though Kid Cudi's discography is genre-crossing and experimental, his sound has always been unique. So what makes a Kid Cudi song recognizable? First, there's his sonic atmosphere, which is often dark, introspective, or reflecting some altered state of mind using various techniques and motifs. Kid Cudi's music is sometimes referred to as trip-hop, a subgenre that fuses rap and hip-hop with other sounds like funk, house, R&B, or experimental. Cudi's musical influences also span decades and multiple genres, and include but aren't limited to Jay-Z, Run DMC, NWA, Jimi Hendrix, Nirvana, and even Pink Floyd. Kid Cudi is also known for his humming, which he often features in songs starting all the way from his first album, Man on the Moon. The humming is low and intimate, and it's always been a fan favorite. It helps you feel like the songs are more personal, coming straight from Kid Cudi's heart. The way he mixes and records these hums creates a visceral response in the listener, like he's singing the song just for you. Kid Cudi's lyrics have always been deeply personal, and his humming is another extension of that. Personal lyrics are also essential to a Kid Cudi song. He uses his words to connect with the listener as well as explore his own anxieties. He once said, my mission statement since day one is that I wanna help kids feel less alone and help them stop committing suicide. While his lyrics often explore the darker parts of his mind, they also make room for hope and redemption. Happiness might not be present in the songs, but Cudi's words imply that joy can be found in life if you look hard enough. Kid Cudi's career has been paused several times due to his mental health struggles, but in 2018, he seemed to finally find peace after his time in rehab. That same year, Kid Cudi and Kanye West teamed up to form the super duo Kid See Ghosts. They released a self-titled album through Good Music, which fuses hip-hop, rap, and psychedelic rock together, creating a unique sound that explores both of their struggles with mental illness. Kid See Ghost is considered by many to be Kid Cudi's most beautiful work yet. But until recently, it had been over four years since we'd heard any new solo music from Kid Cudi. That changed when just a few weeks ago, he dropped a single, Leader of the Delinquents, ahead of his new album, Enter Galactic, which will drop alongside an animated series on Netflix. Perhaps no rapper's critical reception has yo-yoed as much as Kid Cudi's over the last decade. But reviews are different from a lasting legacy, and the one Kid Cudi has created surpasses nearly every living musician. His contributions to music and his public persona continue to inspire a new generation of artists as well. In many ways, thanks to Kid Cudi's influence, no longer do artists feel the need to be hyper-masculine or unemotional to find success. You can rap about feelings and still have catchy singles. Kid Cudi paved the way for a musical community that can be more daring, more experimental, and open in every way. Travis Scott has said in the past that Kid Cudi is the realest rapper alive. He's always been unflinchingly honest and open about his mental health and the darkness in his soul. He's never put up a front or made a gimmick of his music. His lyrics are always about what he's feeling when he's feeling it. Through Kid Cudi's point of view, a listener can truly understand his struggle with mental illness and even better understand their own. 
It's his singing, his music, and his humming that can bring people together to show everyone, including Kid Cudi himself, that we are never truly alone. This has been Volksgeist. Thank you for watching. If you're someone with a lot of creative ideas, you can turn those ideas into a thriving business with Shopify. Shopify is your one-stop shop for creating an online business that looks sleek and modern with no coding required. With Shopify, you can make a name, a logo, an online store, manage sales, marketing, finances, and more. And I know what I'm talking about. I have my own online merch store through Shopify. So turn your big idea into an online business and help support Volksgeist while you're at it. You can check out shopify.com slash free dash trial slash Volksgeist and begin your 14 day free trial today. That's a 14 day free trial with no credit card required at shopify.com slash free dash trial slash Volksgeist. how interesting Kid Cudi's presence in the music industry has been. Beep.